Welcome to Schedule Anywhere. In this video, we'll be walking through the steps on how to get started. Feel free to keep this video open while you go through Schedule Anywhere and get familiar with it. To get started with Schedule Anywhere, the first thing you want to do is log in. Click on Customer Login, and then type in your username and password. The next step is to create your first schedule. You need to give your schedule a name. This could simply be a Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3. It could be the name of a location or department. In my example, I'm just going to call it Schedule 1. Select your other settings. Keep in mind you can always go back and change these later. And hit Save. You've just created your first schedule. You can continue to create more schedules from this screen. The reason you may have more than one schedule is if you have multiple sites or locations and each one has a different schedule. Once your schedule is created, you can start adding to it. However, you'll see that there are no employees in the schedule quite yet. You have to create them first. To do this, go to Setup, Company Maintenance, Employees. To create a new employee, select Add New Employee. Next, just fill in the fields. Not all fields are required, however you do need an email if you plan on having this employee log in. Each employee can be assigned one manager, location, department, or position. These are set up by going to Setup, Company Maintenance, Position, Departments, Locations. Managers are defined when you set up the employees. Anybody listed as a manager will appear here. If you're not sure what to use for locations, departments, or positions, don't worry. These aren't required fields and they don't have to be set up right now. The next tab is titled Permissions. This will redecide what type of access you want to give this employee. The first step is setting up a username. And a password. Next you want to set up your user permissions. This is the type of access this employee will have when they log in. You can choose to have them see just their personal schedule, the entire staff schedule. You can give them the ability to request time off and also the ability to change their employee profile. This would include things like changing their username and password and general contact information. If you want this employee to be able to make changes to the schedule, you want to go down to the Administrative Permissions. An administrator has access to all areas of the program and can make changes to everything. If you only want this employee to be able to make changes to certain things, you want to just select the items you want them to change. If somebody is strictly a scheduler, you want to assign them as a manager. By doing this, they'll be able to make changes to the schedule and assign shifts, but not make changes to higher level settings. The next tab is titled Skills. The term Skills can be used loosely. It may be a certification that this employee has, a piece of equipment they can operate, a language they speak, or even a key to the building. A skill is anything that that employee possesses that other employees may not. That's useful for scheduling because you can quickly see which employees have which skills and you can schedule them accordingly. Hours and Wages in this tab, you can indicate how many hours per week this employee wants. You can use this tool to ensure your employees are getting the right number of hours per week, whether they be full-time employees or part-time employees. You can also indicate how much an employee makes, either per hour or per day. The number you put in here directly correlates with the report titled, Estimated Cost. 
This report will give you a projected total on how much it will cost to pay your employees. It will take the number of hours scheduled multiplied by the cost you put into this field. Custom fields. Custom fields can be used to track any additional information about this employee. This can range from something like date of birth to the type of car they drive. To change these, just click on the title of the field and rename it whatever you'd like. When you're done creating your employee profile, just hit save. You've just created your first employee. Before you get carried away to start creating all of your employees, you may want to go back to setup, company maintenance, and define your positions, departments, and locations. Just click add new position, give your position a name, and hit save. You can create as many positions, departments, or locations as you'd like, but you can only assign one per employee. Once these are created, we can then assign them to employees. I'll go back to Joe Johnson because we didn't assign anything to him earlier because none were created. Now that we've created positions, you'll see them in the drop-down menu. Once your employees are created, you can add them to the schedule. To do this, go to your schedule, go to Edit, Insert, Employee, and select the employees you want to add on this schedule. The reason employees aren't automatically added to the schedule is because you may have multiple schedules and you may want some employees on one schedule and a different set of employees on a different schedule. To create more schedules, go to Setup, Schedules, Add New Schedule, and remember, you can label them whatever you'd like. When you've created more than one schedule, the drop-down menu will appear on the right-hand side and you can choose between your different schedules. Remember, I only added employees to Schedule 1. That's why there are none on Schedule 2. Let's add some now. Go to Edit, Insert, Employee, and this time I'm only going to select a few employees. There are a lot of benefits to having multiple schedules. If you have different stores, locations, or departments, you can keep them separate from each other by creating a different schedule for each one. If you have employees who work across multiple stores, locations, or departments, that's okay. You can put them in multiple schedules and the program will still track their total hours correctly. This concludes part one of Getting Started with Schedule Anywhere.